Okay, so uh, I'm simply showing that how to process wood. <laughs> Basically, what it means by is how to prepare a wood material that you can buy in an wood store. Just kind of slice it uh, using a very long bandsaw. So they just cut side by side. And then this one is kind of the, the raw wood that you probably, you can buy in an wood store. Still, it's very expensive. Good to cut down the trees like the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is known as wood processing. I think there's another one. Uh, let me see. Okay. Mega wood. So kind of this one is kind of like showing another kind of wood processing technique. So they just cut side by side and create a very nice wood panel. And what and then uh, these are uh, actually so uh, one of the most expensive <laughs> food that you you can buy probably. Uh, each piece is like each piece, even if it's a really nice one, is kind of like a couple hundred dollars. Design so the, uh, what you need to the design inside the yeah, yeah. This is such a nice piece. Uh, so this is unbelievable because uh, they create a they use really one of the nicest and one of the largest wood table. I believe that each piece is maybe a couple thousand dollars, probably. So they create this kind of pieces. And then they just kind of sand it, sand the surface, and they just create a nice natural wood looking table out of it. And this is really beautiful. I definitely want to, but their <clears throat> assembly was kind of striking to me. Because what they do, without really, they just kind of add a metal piece, and they use the one of the cheapest screws to do that. It's unbelievable to me. Yeah, but. I mean, it's kind of mixing caviar with tomato, tomato ketchup. <laughs> I was shocked at that. I was very feel good, and after that, I was shocked. At that. Okay, then after what happened is uh, how to make MDF board is that so they collect all the wood dust. Uh, and then there are many different things. So even uh, something chips chips become the so-called particle board, and this one is medium density board, meaning that they mix all the powder with a lot of glue and they press it. So basically, it's kind of like the, it's kind of same thing that the milka so it's kind of flour that mixed with water and then just flatten it and then just bake it. So that's the, how it is made. But one of the bad things, and actually all the furniture you can buy these days are made out of this. That's why all our children have all the skin problems, because this one has a lot of glue inside. And then so this one is almost kind of like powder level with chips. But you, there's another even better one is so cool, hard to make a chipboard. So chipboard is a little bit slightly bigger than powder. Still the same process. So you have the wood chips first, but it's kind of roughly grind instead of fine grind. And then there's the still same process. They combine with glue and they press it. They just make uh, this kind of particle board. And particle board look like this particle. So 
So this one is left side is MDF and the right one is particle board. And so, uh, yeah, so kind of you see that this one is more fine grain, how particle is slightly bigger than bigger than. Yeah. So would you say the first one is better quality? Not really. Uh, uh, so actually, so quality, when we the particle is kind of less harmful. But however, uh, the quality is kind of like fluctuating. So the quality is kind of stable. 100 embedded board is exactly look like exactly the same height, same thickness. But chip board is kind of it really depends on the chip, the conditions of chips. And then the next one is actually plywood. Uh, plywood is actually they laminate. Oh, ooh, like a pencil cutting. So they kind of almost cut like paper thin. They slice it on a sideway. And then this basically make a wood paper. And then they kind of overlap on a diagonal way. And they basically just also glue them together and then make those ones. Uh, and the plywood has two different kinds of it. So low quality plywood and high quality plywood. So when they created this kind of like paper thin plywood, it, as you see that this one has a kind of some kind of <coughs> scratch inside of it. So actually many wood have some, as you see here, actually this one has some kind of like only 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 like so they separate those ones that which has this kind of mark and which do not have any mark. So if they have something this kind, it's kind of inevitable to have this kind of one damaged mark. So they separate something finest quality one on a separate place, and then they only make fire only kind of old kind, which is almost perfect fire. So you will never see those marks on plywood. No, so kind of like that's that's one of the highest quality plywood, and then that price of highest quality is as expensive as wood. Okay. Well, that one is kind of like replacement of real wood because this one has really fine quality and looks beautiful, and the quality of wood is as good as real. Wood. And then some medium quality plywood is that. They use some bending stones in the middle, and then only the front cover and back cover has the finest quality plywood. So that's the middle of the and the lowest quality one is weak, but it doesn't really matter whether it has a bark or not. Just take it. So there are three different kinds of plywood. The difference is when you cut it, and you see some kind of mark if you buy the medium grain. So this one is kind of actually it's not this is kind of medium grain. This is so kind of as you see that it has actually it has about nice one to the front side too, but still you see it doesn't have one here. So that's all the wood. So then, so now, and then, so the, okay, so now we are going to NPF. However, uh, we cannot use. <laughs> okay, so. So, so we are going to use NPF.
Okay, so now we have an MPF. However, we are going to use screw to pull. So we cannot really use. Okay, so now I have to draw that we cannot really use the four side of it. Oh, no. yes. So I kind of draw out some margin here. So we are gonna use this inner area only because this one is used for holding this material to be a base of the CNC machine. And then this size of this one is roughly, I'm just only use kind of like 10 centimeter only. So consider that you need to make a wood material a couple of centimeters larger than the original cut. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be the solver, can some cable. But now it's very strong. So I just make an extremely simple uh, case. So here, going back to Rhino. So what I'm going to do, I just make a simple box starting from 0, 0, 0, 100 and 100. And again, for the thickness wise, so this one is roughly nine millimeter. So total maybe probably 27 millimeter. But since we add glue in the middle, it becomes roughly about three centimeter. When they cut the single piece of it, we generally uh, make set our thickness thicker than each piece because we want to cut through it. But this one actually we don't want to cut through it, so we are using a little bit less thickness to make some material left to hold the base. So even though this one is roughly about twenty-seven millimeter, we just roughly use twenty-five millimeter. But one thing you need to care about is that I don't want to make that somewhere this glue the kind of something of the adjacent area. So try to avoid to make something horizontal area somewhere in this each of the adjacent line. So I would rather probably use somewhere in the middle here so we have a sort of smooth, nice quality. And actually we are going to see this kind of uh, line mark because this one, basically this one is a kind of glue. And actually this one is made by our TA. I'm not so sure he, uh, in general, when we glue, when we glue wood, we actually just glue uh, like this. And then we just draw some line and they fill inside. We shouldn't do this one. What, how to use glue when we attach for CNC material? Like you glue one section and then you put something to stick it on then you glue another section. Oh, what I mean by this is the glue pattern. Ah, um. You go, 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 they just kind of glue some boundary area and they still be like this. This is kind of really lousy way of construction. What we have to do? We have to do this. No empty area. We kind of paste wood almost everywhere. Otherwise, the some part will just pop out because it doesn't hold it. And we don't know where is will be the cutout area. So it means if you cut out this one, well, everything will be separate because there's no glue. So when you do this, do not save glue. We have tons of glue that we have a glue that you cannot use up until the rest of your life. 
So do not say glue. You use them a lot. As you know, when you use glue, but my suggestion is for any purpose of wood stacking, use enough glue. That kind of just kind of fall out. It's okay. Please waste your glue to make a really nice material. Huh? Which one? Huh? Uh, gripper. Yeah, we are going to use gripper after of applying glue. Yes. Yes. Oh, so I kind of want to show you some how to because I will demonstrate one more time. However, uh, how to do glue wood. So this one will really show nice way of gluing. Okay, so after applying, he used a kind of like roller to spread all the wood to every area. Do you see that? He just carefully apply everywhere. And then, as again, here's another issue. Some lousy constructors, they apply one side only. And then just glue them together, but apply both the side and then glue it. That makes really strong uh, attachment. As you see that it, it has a both sides are glued together. He apply on the next side again. And as many uh, lousy constructors just apply in that place without using roller. But that's really bad habit. So this guy is actually kind of like very serious woodworker. He knows what he's doing. But if you kind of check about any Korean construction YouTube video, they just apply this and then. Please do not, yeah. So if it is someone else's house, yes, you may do, but if it is your house, you don't want to do that. And after that, you actually use the clamp to hold it and then, so what is important in glue is so-called, I forgot that. So solidifying working hour. What does that mean by working hour is that the glue will be solidified in certain amount of time. If it's a crazy glue, your working hour is kind of like two seconds or three seconds. For wood, it's roughly about one hour, meaning that in one hour, you can take it out, you can kind of move with, so it's kind of have a fluctuation. Then after that, in general, wood glue, uh, another working hour is actually, after two, three hours later, actually you can actually use it actually. It, it's kind of like, it's okay to move it, but however, if it is MDF for plywood, yes, two, three hours is okay, because it's not really serious work. If it is solid wood and very expensive material, I would wait one whole day to make it really, with strong connection. So if you actually apply glue today, we are not going to use it for CNC. So you have to glue it and then you have to go out and come back in another day and use it. Okay, so here, I'm just going to use this one, but as you see that I can only use 100 and 100 inside and the thickness is uh, shorter than the actual thickness. So I just use, I just draw a simple box and I start zero, zero and 100 and 100. So zero, one, hundred, one hundred, 100 and then thickness, I just apply 25 only, smaller than its actual size. And then probably you can actually design anything. So let's say that let's just do something, the stupid thing. So I will just apply the bottom surface here. And then I just kind of like, I just play with this, like, I don't know, maybe four by four. 
by five. So it doesn't really matter, but just I kind of like move, I just kind of having just fun. So this one coming here. Oh, I actually, I, I prefer something more fun. So kind of something here. So this one, I just kind of move it a little bit down. So every surface change is supposed to be within this boundary. Then this one, a little bit lower. Well, you see that it doesn't matter about the, the contour point. What is important is the surface itself. So this one is my just basic, very simple surface. So I'm going to actually CNC this one. So all you have to do is just export this one as a CBDS. So export the selected. Uh, something critically important is that, so I play within this bounding box. So this one is actually your kind of reference material bounder dimension, and then this will be maintained. Uh, another issue will be that, uh, so this is not, so the actual, really actual dimension is actually, uh, if I draw that, actual dimension would be probably 27 millimeter, which is slightly higher, higher than that. So, so actually, I actually use this one to match the higher point part. One of the reason, and then we are kind of use this bottom layer as some leftover material. Because, and you something you need to remember is that when you use CNC, the surface is zero, not the bottom side. So everything is supposed to be measured from the surface, not the bottom side. And then here, because the surface is zero and this one is okay, and then there will be some safe area below. So here, this is something you need to be careful that the reference is supposed to be the top surface, not the bottom surface. Okay. I just want to see changing perspective. I want to see it in a, um, in a material, how it's going to look in the material. So you mean the visualization yeah. style? So I just kind of uh, hide this box. So this will look like this. Oh. Okay. Okay. Then I will export this one. Uh, actually, you can actually, uh, you can export everything together. But however, uh, I would not mind to export this one at all. Just I just exported this one only. So just go to file, export the selected. And then this one, you need to export it as a 3DS. So this one would be test. There's one test, so I said test. Surface. <laughs> test surface. So this one C and C. Test. Okay. So this will be okay. And if you use if your polygon and if you preview, you, you will see kind of this kind of edge here. And then you sometimes it actually it's kind of it's visible. And then if you actually increase this one, if you use more polygons, as you see, this one is kind of more refined one. So actually, this one's more more curvy than previous one. But still, I just kind of like export it somewhere in the middle, and that's it. So this one is exported. And then you have to open Recarve. And then again, we are going to use a little bit bigger material, but the reference size we are going to is only 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So here I create a new file. And then width is 100. And also height is 100, thickness is 27. <coughs> and this is the 3D model we made. And then we import <coughs> file. So import, actually, in this case, you need to import 3D model. And then I just import CNC test. Then it, at first time, because that the the original surface was, the origin point was left lower corner. However, you just kind of just position and import and then import, it will just automatically match. So don't worry about it. But this will only happen when your reference material is the boundary size of re reference material is when identical to our material. 
which got automatically fit. So this is the kind of surface of it. And as you see that since I export this somewhere in mid grade, so it can, you probably see this kind of triangulated shape. If you want to remove it, you just kind of use more polygons, that's it. And then after that, what we are going to do is we, are, we just will do two different cutting. The first one is rough cutting. So I just selected this one. And then I'm going to use for rough cutting and just that's okay. And therefore I just use quarter inch end the mill. So that's done. And then just simply do calculate. Then actually this one, if you simulate it, this one just roughly cut out unnecessary material in a crude way. And done. So this one is rough cutting and this will take uh, half an hour roughly. And after finishing this one, we need to use fine cutting. <clears throat> And then here I would, would use, use, I would use bold nose quarter inch, 4분의 1 inch인데, 이거 한 3, 4 mm 정도 돼요. 요걸 써서, and then if I do this calculate, it's gonna take a while. Oh, we used to create it there. So anyway, so I just use it. And then if I simulate it, 요게, Pro, okay, trial edition. This will cause happen because it is a trial edition, but it will be fine that if you just use licensed version. Yeah, so I just show this one in the licensed version. Let me just try one more time. Oh, so I think this one is okay. How long does that one take, sir? Uh, I will just simulate one more time. So let's just see, preview. This. So let's just check. So oh, this is the speed is really huh? I think the speed is really high. No, actually this one has an error. That's why oh. it stopped in the middle. It didn't let go, just it just cut outside the area only. But let's say this one is actually our cutting path. The time will be six minutes. There's something wrong, so unfortunately. So I will check this one in the licensed version that it will be fine. But this one is roughly the cutting area. What's wrong? And ah, uh, the uh, uh, ball nose, ah, uh, ball nose quarter. Oh, I select end mill. If I switch to ball nose, minimum detail fine. Maybe this one fine. Okay, and then let's just try one more time. Too long, it's too fun. I just close it. We have to wait. Now it's just going to fall. The photo, <laughs> in general, <laughs> this will take long. So yeah, just run it and it just go something else. <clears throat> well, I said it's too, fine. too extreme fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
근데 그냥 아마 so in general 그냥 그 라인으로 해 오시면 그 조교가 도와주실 거예요. 아, 그냥 네. 라인으로만 해오시면 돼요. 뭐 레스모 리모트 프로젝팅 에피트. 이 뭐가 문제인지 잘 모르겠어. 뭐 아까까지 전화 없을 때. 벌써 I don't I think this is the if this is the problem of this this software I think. Okay, so let's go there. So I just cut. Uh,